England's famed golden generation of the mid noughties have endured a mixed time on the touchline. Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard started the campaign as Premier League managers only to be fired. Sol Campbell, Paul Scholes and Gary Neville all tried and failed. John Terry is yet to be more than an assistant, while Wayne Rooney has endured quite an adventure, first at a sinking Derby County and now with DC United in the MLS. Bar a few moments of joy, none have been able to replicate the glory of their playing days. But not all hope is lost, as in Michael Carrick, England has a former three lion shining brightly in the dugout. In just four months, Carrick has transformed Middlesbrough from a side staring down the barrel of relegation to one knocking on the door of the Premier League. Under the former midfielder's guidance, the Teesiders have leaped from 22nd to 3rd in the Championship, winning 11 and only losing 4 of his 18 games in charge. Yet, Carrick hasn't just got Borough grinding out results. Instead, he has coached them into one of the most exciting teams in England, scoring for fun and deploying tactics that have dazzled the opposition. So, what is going on at Middlesbrough under Michael Carrick? In this Football Daily Explained, we are heading to Teesside to profile the man the tabloids are already labelling England's future manager. In many ways, Michael Carrick was destined to be a quality coach. His career on the pitch was spent dictating play with his intelligence and passing at the base of midfield, most notably at West Ham, Tottenham and then at Manchester United. He amassed nearly 500 top flight appearances, won 5 league titles and a Champions League and earned 34 caps for England. Were he not playing in the era of Lampard, Gerrard or Scholes, the recognition for his work would certainly be greater. But to his peers, his ability was always held in high regard. Xavi has called him a complete player. Arsene Wenger said he could play for Barcelona, while Pep Guardiola held him as one of the best holding midfielders he had ever seen, on par with Xavi Alonso and Sergio Busquets. There are countless quotes from his former Manchester United teammates too about the composure and control he brought to the side. Paul Scholes called him a Rolls Royce, Gary Neville likened his playing style to listening to a piano, and Sir Alex Ferguson went one step further, calling him the best English player in the game in 2014. It surprised few then that Carrick remained at Old Trafford following his retirement, joining Jose Mourinho's coaching staff. Following the Portuguese's dismissal, he briefly became interim manager, demonstrating the authority he already commanded. He stayed on as an assistant for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, boosting his experience further. Paul Pogba has since credited Carrick's influence as a coach, along with Fred, who told The Express that his personal sessions with the former midfielder helped install calm into his game. Carrick again stepped in as caretaker when Solskjaer was sacked, this time presiding over an unbeaten three matches in charge. United won against Villarreal and Arsenal under his watch before he made way for Ralph Rangnick. It may have been brief, but Carrick's managerial career had all the foundations to be successful. The only question that remained was which team would take a chance on him first. Middlesbrough owner and chairman Steve Gibson deserves credit for turning to the 41-year-old in his time of need. Under Chris Wilder, the atmosphere at the Riverside Stadium had turned sour, thanks to a failed charge for the playoffs last season and Wilder's refusal to silence rumours he could become Sean Dyche's successor at Burnley. And that negativity leaked into their early form this term. Their total of 2 wins and 10 points after 11 matches was their worst start since 1985-86, compounded by the fact the team had scored 13 yet conceded 16. Hopes of ending their 6 year absence from the Premier League looked in vain, while Wilder joined an experienced list of Football League veterans that had failed to promote Borough, including Neil Warnock and Tony Pulis. Gibson had taken a chance on a novice manager before, lending Jonathan Woodgate his first head role back in 2019. But that too had ended in disaster, Woodgate sat after 41 matches with a dismal win rate of 22%. Still, Gibson declared Carrick the perfect fit and the outstanding candidate of the dozen or so who interviewed for the job. His first game in charge ended in defeat to Preston North End. Since then though, they never looked back, only losing once more in their next 10 league matches. So what has Carrick implemented? The biggest surprise about the new improved Middlesbrough is just how quickly the players have bought into Carrick's complex but effective tactical approach. Out of possession, they line up in a 4-2-3-1, nothing novel there. However, with the ball, Borough shift into a fluid 3-2-5, pushing forward one of the fullbacks while the other drops into centre half. The striker then drifts towards possession two, helping create triangles and passing exchanges that can overwhelm the opposition defenders and offer space for runners to break the line. 
This attacking system means they retain plenty of width while packing the midfield, which has proven exceedingly difficult to combat. A lot of their creativity has come on the flanks. Left-back Ryan Giles has produced a team-best seven assists this term, more than the attack-minded Marcus Force on the right side, although the Finnish international does have seven goals to complement his four assists. But it's not just in the wide areas where Borough are so effective. Carrick has made them one of the most versatile and possession-heavy sides in the championship, averaging over 56% of the ball. With a pass accuracy of nearly 81%, better by just Burnley and Swansea, they are happy biding their time, even playing back backwards if necessary and waiting for the perfect moment to unlock the opposition. And when they decide to strike, Borough have been lethal. No side in the English second tier enjoys more shots in the penalty area or six yard box while they rarely shoot from distance and the result is 39 goals in Carrick's 17 league games in charge. They have also scored more on the counter-attack than any side too, showing another element to their passing game. Carrick's authority is stamped all over these tactics. Online, you can find coaching courses from the man himself, featuring sessions designed to open the opposition with incisive passing and teamwork. Meanwhile, the control he oozed during his playing days has seeped into his managerial style. Borough's experienced central midfielder Johnny Housen described to The Athletic the patience and calmness Carrick has installed, adding, he's encouraging, positive, he's fine if we make mistakes when we're trying to do the right things. Carrick has also shown a deep understanding of his squad's potential. Tommy Smith barely featured under Chris Wilder, but has become the first pick at right back under the new manager. 20-year-old Hayden Hackney has started every league game since October at the base of midfield, having scrapped for survival at Scunthorpe last term, while Ryan Giles has been converted from a left winger to a left back under the Englishman. Attacking midfielder Riley McGree has also been in excellent form since returning from the World Cup with Australia. But arguably no one has enjoyed the arrival of Carrick on Teesside more than Tuba Akpom. The top scorer in the championship, 16 of Akpom's 19 goals have come since the change of manager, and he's now just one away from becoming the first player at Middlesbrough since 1990 to net 20 league goals in a single campaign. It's a remarkable turnaround in fortune for the 27-year-old, who only last season was sent back on loan to Pauk Thessaloniki in Greece the same side he was bought from for £2.8 million in 2020. The Arsenal Academy graduate had never previously hit double figures in English football despite numerous loan spells across the country, but again, Carrick deserves credit for helping him realise his true ability. Carrick has moved Akpom from a number 9 to a number 10, a decision the manager has put down to instinct. The deeper role has allowed Akpom to time his runs going forward and benefits from the movement of his teammates. The quality of the chance creation around him is so high, 47% of of his 2.9 shots per 90 are on target, resulting in a lethal conversion rate of over one goal every four attempts. Few will have predicted Akpom's flourish this season, however, Carrick insists it's all down to a change in mentality. On Akpom, he seems to be bigger, quicker, playing free. You can't underestimate the power of the mind. Akpom, like Middlesbrough, have reset and hit new heights under Michael Carrick. It's early days, but if this is what he can do with a group of players who started the season battling relegation, then just imagine what he could do with the elite at his disposal. Only time will tell if we find out. So that was our explained on the rise of Michael Carrick and how he is transforming Middlesbrough. But Borough fans, we want to hear from you. How pleased are you with the Englishman? Let us know in the comments down below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you never miss a Football Daily video. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.